Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah. In this video, we're gonna be making egg holders for Easter. These designs are really special because you can either use the pre-made ones, and I've got a little dog and a cat, or I'm gonna show you how you can switch the head for any of my layered dog or cat SVGs. I've got over 200 different dog designs to choose from and over 20 cats. So hopefully there's something there which will help you to match your pet. Each of the Easter egg holders comes in two separate sizes. The first is this one, which fits a Cadbury's cream egg in the middle. And the second one has slightly larger holes in for Kinder eggs. So let's see how to make them. You can download the free cutting file for this project at craftwithsarah.com forward slash free dash SVGs or follow the link in the description of this video to go straight to the download page. After you've downloaded the file from my blog, it'll come as a zip folder. You need to unzip it before you can upload the files into Cricut Design Space. To do that on a Windows computer, simply right click on the zip folder and press extract all. Choose where you want to save it and press extract. If you're on a mobile device or a Mac, then it'll work slightly differently. So if that's the case, check the link in the description of this video to read the full tutorial for this post and I've put some links in there for how to unzip on other types of machine or device. Let's have a little look at what's inside this folder now that we've unzipped it. There are three folders at the top and this contains all of the different files for these cat and dog egg holders. You've got the pre-designed cat at the top, then the pre-designed dog and then the make your own and then that's got the cat and the dog inside there. You've also got an assembly guide PDF document which shows you how to stick the designs together when you've cut them out. And then another PDF which is called Important Sizing Instructions. And it's called that because it's important. So <laughs> make sure you open this up and read it as you're going along because it contains all of the sizes that you need to make the designs in Cricut Design Space. Sometimes Design Space has a bit of a tendency to resize things when you upload them. So by checking it against this PDF guide, you'll just be able to make sure that you're going to cut everything out of the correct size so that your Easter eggs will fit in them perfectly. I'm going to show you for the first part of this tutorial how to load in the pre-designed cat and then I'll show you how to recolor it so that you can better match your cat if you wanted to keep the exact design. After that, I'll show you how you can design your own so that you can make any cat or dog breed using the make your own templates. Then we'll stick them all together and I'll show you how they look as a little collection. Open up Cricut Design Space and start a new project and then go to upload in the left and then upload image. You can then either click browse to find the files on your computer or drag and drop them in. Make sure you choose the unzipped version of the folder and then go into there and then choose the design you want. I'm going to use the cat pre-designed one and I'm going to choose the large size for Kinder Eggs. And then in Cricut Design Space, you want to choose the file which starts SVG in the file name. So I'm going to drag that one in and then it will show a preview which looks like this. This is all looking good, so I'm going to go ahead and press Upload. And then it will appear in your recent upload, so you can click on it and then press Add to Canvas. Now it's important to check that PDF guide to make sure it's loaded in at the correct size. For the Kinder Egg version of the cat, it should be 8.767 inches wide and 11.9 inches tall. So mine has loaded in at the correct size, so that's all good. But if for some reason yours hadn't, then you can just type the number into here. For example, if I was to do 8 and press enter, you see it resizes the height in proportion to. But I'm going to undo that because as I said, it did load in correctly. The design is of a ginger cat, but I'm going to show you quickly how you can recolor it if you want to better match your own cat. So let's turn this ginger cat into a black and white cat. Look down the layers over on the right hand side until you find the ones you want to change. I've selected the light colour of the head by clicking in there. And then in the colour box, just change it to how you want to do it. 
When I'm making a black and white animal, then I like to use a very dark gray for the color which appears behind the eyes. And that's just so that the eyes, you can still see them. It's not as noticeable on the cat because it's got the blue outline around the eye, but for the dog design, it doesn't, it's just the black and the white. So by putting a very dark gray just behind the eye, instead of a pure black, it means that when the eyes are cut from pure black, you'll still be able to see them on top of that gray. All right, so now I'm gonna have a look at the next layer. I've clicked that in the layers panel, and this one I will make a black. And you can see now by having that difference in the dark gray and the black, you can see all of the details beautifully. I think I'll keep the white tummy, but if your cat didn't have a different colored tummy to the rest of the body, you can delete that layer by clicking it in the layers panel over here, and then just press delete on your keyboard and it will get rid of it. I'll undo that one to put it back, and then I'm going to choose the body layer and change that to my same dark gray. And then for the main body, let's have that one in black and then also the tail in black. And then you also need to change the other parts to the design. So you've got the back of the design, which is the one which is the main body shape, and then two pieces which are gonna form the base. Now you don't need to use the scoring tool on a Cricut machine to make this design because all of the little lines you can see here are actually little tiny cutouts in the card itself. So that would just cut using your standard blade. You don't need to score anything. An easy way to change the color of these and make sure we've got exactly the same shade is to click color sync over on the top right. And then you can simply drag and drop the layers onto the color that you want to make them. Now I can see from looking at here that I've got a slightly different black for the eyes than I've used for the main body. And I want it to be all the same. So I'm just gonna move those eyes onto the same black. And now that will cut on the same mat when I load it into the Cricut. This is now five separate colors. We've got black, dark gray, white, pink, and blue. And this is now all ready for me to cut out, so I'd simply click on make it. And then if you want to, you can move things about so they take up less space on your cardstock and that can help you to save materials. So I'm just gonna look down and if you want to change the paper size, you can do that. And you may find that that puts things onto a second sheet if they won't all fit on the first. So go ahead. Have a little look, change your colors if you need to, and then get everything cut out from cardstock. And then I'll show you how to stick it together a little bit later on in this video. But for now, let's see how you can design your own custom cat or dog using the make your own file included in this download. To design your own cat or dog, first you'll need to find the head or face that you're gonna add on to the main egg holder body. You can use any design that you find online for this, but if you'd like to use one of my files, they're all available in my shop. I've got over 200 different dog designs and over 20 different cats, so I'll show you how to find them. Go to shop.craftwithsarah.com and then under categories, you can choose either cat SVGs or dog SVGs. I'll show you the cat ones first, so I just have a little quick scroll. So you can see all of the different cats that I've got in here for different cat breeds. If we go back to the top and go into categories again and choose dogs, then there are literally hundreds to choose from in here, all different breeds. And by default, it will sort it by best selling, but if you change that, then you can change it to alphabetical, which can make it easier to find a specific dog breed that you're looking for. So you can have a look through all of those ones and then choose the design that you want to make. Go ahead and purchase it. And then I'll show you how you can use it for your very own egg holder for Easter. Go back into design space and go to upload and then upload image. This time we're gonna upload the custom make your own version of the egg holder. I'm gonna do a Dachshund dog. So I'm gonna look in the make your own folder 
and then this time I'll do a small size for cream eggs and then in here you've got the different file formats and then the one you're looking for in design space is the one that starts SVG in the file name and then there's one for a cat and one for a dog. Let's drag the dog one in and this is what it looks like. So you see it's got a circle at the top and that's where we're going to add our custom head. Press upload. And then you also want to upload the dog or cat SVG you're going to be using. I've already got my Dachshund, so I'm going to select both of those ones and then press add to canvas. Just like before, we need to make sure that the egg holder is loaded in at the correct size. So load up that PDF which has all the sizes in. But for the dog one, it should be 6.258 inches wide and 9.7 inches tall, which this is, so that is all good. We are good to continue. It's really important for the rest of this tutorial that you never resize the actual egg holder pieces. All we're going to resize is the dog or the cat itself so that it fits on this existing size. It doesn't matter when you add the head that it goes up above this, just don't actually resize these pieces itself, otherwise the hole in the middle for the egg won't be correctly sized anymore. First, we need to take the head apart from the body of the animal which you've chosen. To do this, look in the layers panel and you can see you've got all the different pieces of the dog. Keep looking down until you find where the body pieces start and then press one of them in the layers panel and click delete on your keyboard. And then keep doing that for all of the body layers and then eventually you'll just be left with the head. I'm going to make this one a bit bigger so you can see. Now most of the dogs you would be absolutely fine with just deleting the body but sometimes like with this Dachshund you might need to do a little bit of extra clever formatting because in this case we've got little holes here for the eyebrows and that would have been showing one of those body layers through the holes to fill in the gaps but because we've deleted all of those it's now got some weird little holes in his head. There are two different ways that you could fix this. The first is by going down and looking for the head layer with the holes in and then clicking it. Go to contour and then press hide all contours and close. And that will fill them in so they're now not there anymore. But if you wanted to keep them to add the detail, then what you do instead is click on the, um, the head layers, press ungroup in the layers panel and that's separated out all of those head layers. Scroll down to find the very bottom one that we need to fix and press duplicate and move that over to one side. Drag a box around your original head layers and group it again by pressing group at the top. And that's just so that we can keep all those layers together. Now for this copy one, I'm gonna change it to the darker brown of the other ears, click on it, contour, hide all contours and that's filled it in on this darker layer. Now we need to put these together so drag a box around both of them and go align center and what that's done is it's perfectly put the dog with all the layers on top of that layer we just filled in so you can see now we have the little holes filled in with brown. Let's just add that bottom layer into our group. So I've clicked on my main group. You see we have all of these layers highlighted to show we've got them selected. Press ungroup and then drag a box around them all again and group them. So now that bottom layer, you can see it's included in this group. And if I just select it and scroll down, you can see there it is there. So now we're ready to put this onto the egg. Scroll back over so we can see. I'm going to click on this and just move it down a bit so I've got space to add the head. And now you see my head is massive at the minute. So I'm going to need to make it smaller. And it can be easier to zoom in on the bottom to see what you're doing a little bit easier. And then you just need to resize it and reposition it. 
and you can rotate it a bit so that it's at an angle if you want to. Now this one looks a little bit weird because I have the white tummy piece which is actually cream at the moment. I don't need that for this particular dog so I'm going to click that layer in the layers panel and press delete to get rid of it. And now this is looking much more natural because we don't have that line where it's going thinner around the tummy. I think that's looking good for the positioning but the body is all the wrong colour. Go to colour sync and this splits everything out by colour so now we can see that we need to change the body colours to match the rest of the dog. I'm going to drag that light colour onto I think the paler brown and then the others you see this is all the pieces of the Easter egg holder and at the moment it's a slightly different brown to what we're using for that dachshund. To make it the same just click and drag it on and I think actually I'm going to choose the lighter brown to cut the rest of the body from. So I drag all of those on and now they're the same colour. So if I zoom out you can see that is now all looking much better and we have our little dachshund head. How this is going to work is that when the head is cut out and when the body is cut out we're just going to glue the head straight on to the circle. So you don't need to worry too much about getting it absolutely perfect in design space because when you cut it out it will be a separate piece anyway. But as long as you're happy with the size that's the important thing because obviously you can't change that once you've cut it out. At this point go ahead and save your work so that you can cut this out again if you need to in the future without having to make all of those changes again. Then this is ready to cut. So just go to make it and just like when I showed you with the cat you can change your paper size if you want to and move things about and get everything cut out. And then it's time for the fun bit of sticking it all together. I thought I'd just show you a couple of other designs that I've made in Design Space so you can see how it looks different for different types of dog and cat. These all use the same dog base but I've changed the head and the colouring to make a Jack Russell, a Golden Retriever and then of course there's the Dachshund we've just finished. So you can see how adding these heads really does make the characters come to life so that you can match them to your pet or your favourite breed of dog. Similarly, here are two different cats which I've made using the cat template. And if you wanted to, you could of course use the dog template and put a cat head on it. So if you didn't want the tail, which is really the only different part, then you could try putting a cat head onto the dog design and it should still look right. But for these two I've got the tails coming in, I just think they're really nice showing it curved around the front. So I've got my ragdoll cat here and then I actually removed the middle tummy piece on this one just like I did with the dachshund and then over here we've got a ginger cat and this one still has the tummy in to give it that white effect. Here are the pieces cut out of my Kinder Egg version of the Labradoodle. I'm going to show you how to stick it together with this one just because it's that little bit bigger so it will be easier to see. So here are my main pieces. Got my front of the dog with all of the layers, the back and then the two base pieces. And if you're doing a custom dog rather than the Labradoodle then you'll just have the circle for the head here and then you'll have all of your pieces which will stick on top. I will go through that after I've stuck together this one, so keep watching if you are doing a custom dog. I'm going to move these three bits over to the side for now and focus on building the front of the dog first. So I've already placed the layers, just one on top of the other, to check I'm happy with all of the colours and that I haven't missed anything. If you're using the pre-made cat and dog designs then they come with an assembly guide which shows you the order in which to stick all of these layers. If you're using a custom design with one of my other dogs and cats then check out the download folder that you got when you purchased that dog or cat design as that will have an assembly guide in it too and you can use that to find out which layers to stick the head together in. For these Kinder Egg and Cream Egg designs it's up to you if you want to use just glue to stick the layers together or if you want to add a bit of depth with some 3D foam pads. 
I am going to use some 3D foam pads, but these are really thin ones. They're only one millimeter thick, which means they add a tiny bit of dimension without it being too much and without it getting too heavy that it will be too front heavy. The glue I'm going to be using for some of the layers is called Kalal. I really like this because it doesn't bend or wrinkle the cardstock like some other glues can do. And I've put it into this needle tip applicator bottle that I got on Amazon. This has a tiny nozzle on it, which means it's going to be really easy for getting into the little details, such as the eyes and the tongue of the dog. Other great glues to use are art glitter glue or barely art glue. For sticking the actual holder together, I'm using double sided tape. And I've got mine in a tape runner, but you could use just any normal double sided tape. You can use glue too, however I have tried both ways and I find that double sided tape works better. It's easier to stick it together because it's you don't have to wait for any glue to dry or anything, it's just sticking straight away. And it also means you can put your egg in straight away because it's all held together. Whereas with glue you need to really wait until that glue is perfectly dry, ideally overnight, to make sure when you put the egg in everything stays held together. So double sided tape, if you've got it, does work out best. All right, so I'm going to start. Just realized I've got these bits the wrong way around. Um, so the front of the dog is the two bits with the head and this is actually the back bit with the circle. So I'm glad I spotted that now, but if you're following along with your assembly guide, then um, you would have already realized that that was wrong. You've probably been shouting at the uh, video at me to uh, try and get me to work it out. All right, so if you're using the, the custom designs, then both your front and your back pieces will look like this with just the rounded bit. So um, it doesn't matter which one you use, but on the pre-made cat and dog, because I've added the head onto the front, it does matter. Okay, so this is gonna be the front of the legs and I'm gonna use my foam squares for this one just to pop it out a little bit and make it look a little bit more realistic with that dimension. You wanna make sure you add a good amount, especially if you're doing the bigger Kinder Egg um, size because this is gonna have everything else stuck to it, all of those head layers. So we need to make sure it's not gonna fall off from the base piece. And also I'm adding some foam squares in the middle of the head to make sure it stays level with all of the stability that these foam pads are going to give it. If you didn't put any in the middle, then you might find that it domes down and doesn't look level, which, you know, it'll still work fine, it just won't look as good. So using some of those extra foam pads in the middle here really does make a difference. We need to line this up carefully. So I'm just going by the pattern on the dog and also making sure that the two ovals line up with each other. And then I've gently dropped that down, which means if I hadn't quite put it in the right place, I could lift it up and it's not gonna damage anything because it's not actually stuck yet. It's just gently placed on top. But I am happy with how that's looking, so I will press to seal those foam pads. And now we can move on to the head. So I'll start with um, the ears, and I'm gonna use my foam squares on these again. These egg holders are great for using up your scraps of cardstock, because apart from the colors that you use for the body, where obviously you need a little bit more, the rest of the details, you only need tiny bits of your color card, so you can use up some of your scraps rather than cutting into a whole new sheet which is great because I have a whole cupboard of scraps that I really need to use up. The next layer is this one, which is gonna make the first part of the face. And again, I'm gonna use foam squares for this one because I think, you know, in real life, it would kind of be raised up from the ears. The ears are sort of behind. I'm gonna add that dimension. And then stick this. On, making sure I line up all of those bits of fluff. The next layer is this one which gives us the circles so we know where to stick the eyes on and I'm going to just use glue for this as it doesn't really need the extra dimension. 
All this is really doing is adding a tiny bit of detail, but also making it easier for us to know where to stick the eyes on the next bit. I think a tractor just went past outside, that was really noisy. Okay, there we are. And now you can see you've got these two little circles and that's where the eyes are going to go. The eyes come in two pieces. You've got a white circle which goes on first and then a black circle. So I'm gonna add my glue on there and then carefully pick up, oh, <laughs> carefully pick up, let's try that again, the two white circles and stick them on. And then a little bit more glue just on the bottom section of that white. And now I'm gonna stick the black eyes on top. These have little holes in them, which is gonna show the white through. And I like it best when those circles in the black are kind of pointing upwards towards the left. But of course you can make them face whatever way you want. Just make sure that both of the eyes are going in the same direction. Otherwise your poor little dog will end up looking a little bit cross-eyed. So as long as they're pointing vaguely in the same place, it will look fine. The next layer is this one to make the eyebrows. And it's up to you on this one if you want to glue it or foam it, depending on how thick you want to make the design. I'm gonna glue this one because we've still got one level of the snout to go on top of this one. And I'm gonna use foam for that one to bring out some details of the tongue. So that one can just be glued. And you see how it sort of covers the eyes with that fluff? It makes it look really cute. Okay, so we've got three bits of the face left. And for the tongue, I'm gonna to turn the remaining piece of the face upside down and just put a tiny bit of glue along that bottom. And then glue the tongue to the back of it. And then what you can do is just turn it round and give it a little wiggle to make sure you're happy with how much of that pink is showing over. But then we're gonna take the foam squares again and add them to the back. I'm gonna put one over the tongue too, just to give it an extra bit of hold. And this is gonna stick on there. And just one more piece left, which is that nose. Dab your glue directly onto the face and then stick the nose on top. And how cute is that? I really, really like it. I think it's adorable. And now this is ready to make the rest of the egg holder. So it is exactly the same technique if you're using either the bigger egg holder or the smaller one. And we have two base pieces. So this one, and it's got the little perforations in. We're just gonna fold upwards along there on both sides. So then you end up with this. And then for the middle bit, again, we're gonna fold it so that we end up with this kind of thing, and this is how it's gonna sit. If you're using the cat design, you need to make sure that you line the tail up with where it's gonna go on the front. So with the dog, it doesn't matter, it's the same on both sides. But the cat, you just need to make sure when you stick it together, you're sticking the bit on here that has the tail to the back of the, back of the front piece. So um, your front piece of the cat has the tail, you'd turn it over and then match it up. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> All right, so now I'm just gonna add the lid back on my glue, otherwise I will forget. I'm gonna get my uh, tape runner, turn my little dog face upside down, and then with the tape runner, I'm going to go along both of the top sides of where we folded up the smaller piece of the base. And I actually find it easier to open out just because my tape is a little bit bigger than these flaps. So if yours is like mine and your tape is bigger, make sure it doesn't go onto the middle square. Instead, overlap it on the end and then just fold it back on itself so that it'll fit. 
And if you want to use glue, as I said, that is fine. You would just probably need to hold it in place until your glue is dry. All right, so now I'm gonna take one of these flaps with the tape on and line it up along the bottom of the dog and then just push it down to get it to stick. And this is just adding an extra bit of stability. Okay, so next we're gonna stick in this piece and it will line up and go directly against the bottom. So it's gonna completely cover that flap that we've just stuck down. I don't know if you can see, if I open it out a bit, you see we've got the flap here that we stuck and then that's gonna go and completely cover it. So open out your little piece and add tape. You want quite a lot. And add that down both sides. There we go. But don't put any in the middle bit with the egg hole cut out. And then, going to make sure that's upright and then push this piece down so it's against that fold line and also that it lines up on the left and the right of the dog and then give that a real good push down especially where it meets that other piece and then we're going to join all of this together so tuck up your little bottom piece so that it's flat remember this is how it's going to stand up so that needs to be perfectly flat and then glue the tape that's on the tab to the bottom side of the bigger piece. So the bit that doesn't have any tape on it is gonna go on top of that bit on the flap that does. And it's a little bit fiddly because <laughs> that tab's not very big, especially on the cream egg versions, but you wanna really push that in together and then finally, take your back piece and just line that up along there. And again, get your fingers in and make sure it's really, really well stuck. And then you should find that your um, design stands up. And I've just said that and I don't think mine's going to. <laughs> really embarrassing you just need to wiggle it about a bit if it doesn't so now it does and it was because I hadn't got this bit quite flat so it was trying to sit at an angle which was making it fall but a little wiggle and then it stands up and then it's ready to put the egg in remember if you use glue you need to wait for it to be really really dry before you put your egg in but as I've used tape I can grab my Kinder Surprise, got a little treat in there. And then just gently place it in between the front and the back. And it will fit in there perfectly. And the base piece we put in there holds it in place and it just stands up as is. So there it is, that's how it's looking. If you want to add a little bit more stability and safety to this, for example, if you're giving it as a gift, then add some more tape to the head section, you can't see, to, uh, to this bit on the inside. And then just fold it in and stick it to the back. And then that egg is not going anywhere. You see I'm sort of shaking it all over the place and it's not going to come out. But if you don't want to stick it, it will just stay in place if you leave it as is. So there we go, there's our little Labradoodle Kinder Surprise. And I've also got the cream egg version, just to show you the difference in size. So they look really, really cute together. And um, I really hope that you enjoy making them. Before we finish up, I've got a few tips on how you can make these look even more like your dog or your cat. And then after that, I'll show you how you stick them together if you're using the custom designs that you've made yourself in Design Space. If you need to add extra details to better match your pet, you can use felt tips, alcohol markers, or any other type of drawing pen or coloring pencils to add details onto your cardstock. 
For example, with this little ginger cat, I'm going to add some stripes down the lighter side of the body. So I've got some alcohol markers here, and then I'm going to move all these other bits out the way so that I've just got that lighter section. Add a little bit of um, paper to protect my work surface, and then just have a little play with my alcohol markers. Now, I am not a colorist. <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. And you could do the same thing for tortoiseshell or tabby cats or whatever you want really, just to add in those details. Or if your pet has maybe like a prominent patch of colour, then you could add that in with felt tips too. This is probably going to look really messy because <laughs> I don't really know what I'm doing with alcohol markers, but at least I tried, right? And here's how my little kitty cat looks all finished with my stripes with my alcohol markers. And I think it turned out really cute and it definitely adds a lot more detail and you can use this so it better matches your um, pet. So it's really quick and easy to do, but worth taking that little bit of extra time. Here's an example of a custom dog cream egg holder that I'm doing. And this is the Dachshund that we designed in Design Space earlier. I've already stuck the feet on with some foam and now it's time to add the head. And this is a little bit trickier because we don't have that shape of the head to go by, so we need to work out where to put the adhesive so that we're not gonna go outside of that edge. I'm using foam squares, but you can do the same with glue. And I'm just going to add my foam directly onto the top of the circle because I know that my head is gonna cover that and I'm just gonna put it on to make doubly sure, but yep, that's all gonna be covered. So now I can just peel off of those foam, release all of that stickiness, and then add my Dachshund head on top. And then I know that's stuck and I've not got any foam pads or any glue if I was using glue coming out from the other side and it's now ready to add all of the other layers to. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make Kinder Egg and Cream Egg holders for Easter with lovely dog and cat designs. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up, use the little button underneath and subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more Cricut Crafts and free SVGs. To get the designs for these, head to craftwithsarah.com or check the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.